the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. This is the Sports Vote Campaign update for Sunday, March 21st, 2021. So the NFT hype by what looks like a group of vested insiders has fallen down as fast as it went up just uh, in the last week or so. Elon backed away from the idea of uh, putting out a tweet as an NFT, so that's going to put a damper on that. Again, the whole crypto thing is garbage. The electricity consumption is becoming a huge topic right now, which it should be. It's the least green thing on the planet. No power and poof, it's all gone. Again, I will say this over and again. This is the biggest scam in the history of mankind. So DraftKings can no longer claim to be debt free. They've got a billion dollars in debt now. In their SEC disclosure pages, uh, there are 30 pages of compliance disclosures. Yeah, no kidding. All you need is one line, the 60-year-old 1961 Wire Act, and that's all anybody needs to see. How this is being ignored as a major thing absolutely blows my mind. It makes no sense. So apparently, it takes a billion dollars a year or more to try to create gambling addicts to destroy sports and society. So that's where that money is going, folks. We seem to have zero ethics in the stock markets these days and practically none in society in general, which is absolutely unsustainable. Kathy Wood, whoever the hell she is, appearing out of absolutely nowhere, buying blocks of stock, then going through the talk show circuit and pimping the price is pretty much fraud in my book. I don't understand how this uh, is allowed to go on as a uh, as a legal operation. It's it's worse than I've ever seen. An analyst have always been questionable in the way they do things, putting out price targets and then going out and talking those price targets up. I'm sorry, folks. DraftKings at $70 when the thing is losing a billion dollars a year and every time they acquire more customers, they lose money at a faster rate makes absolutely zero sense. So to go out and buy a block of the stock and run the talk show circuit to drive the price up is fraud, plain and simple. Um, SpaceX had a near-death experience in 2008. It's worth some investigation. There are definitely parallels with us, although I would say we've experienced two death, near-death experiences, one in 2008, 2009, and then the coronavirus pandemic, which practically wiped everybody out, uh, lost half of our economy in less than 30 days, the wreckage of that is still being assessed, I would say, based on traffic flows, which is a pretty good measure uh, of economic activity, Los Angeles being the second or the first largest market in the country, depending on how you count the numbers. Um, you can get a pretty good idea of where things are, at least I can, by just looking at the traffic on the 210 freeway at Pasadena. And I would say right now it's at about 60 to 70 percent of normal, somewhere in that range. So we're still way, way away from rec a recovery here in spite of what you see in the stock market. So crypto, cannabis, booze and other vices have existed and will continue to exist in some form in the future. I'm not indicating any of that stuff will go away completely, um, including gambling it seems that a vast majority of the population goes by the following protocol when making decisions about things. Is it legal and what's in it for me? Uh, I can say the first time I ever heard somebody say those things, it shocked me because my decision-making protocol is not based on that at all. Uh, in fact, the term what is legal, I've come to understand, is highly variable depending on who's in power and who's adjudicating those facts or those claimed facts. Um, that's just not my decision-making protocol, but it does, uh, it does uh, explain how we get into the messes that we get into. Um, I actually look at it in terms of what is going to be the greatest benefit to the greatest number of people, quite the exact opposite of what seems to be normal. And prior to about I would say about 15 years ago was the first time I actually heard that. I don't remember the conversation exactly and who it was, but it was quite literally that's 
all there is to most people's decision making. Is it legal and what's in it for me? It blew my mind. So believe me or don't believe me, but I swear to you that's the truth. Um, NFL $100 billion deal, lots of headlines on that. I would say good luck making that pay off. Public habits and behavior are changing very fast. Too bad none of that money flows to the fans. Guess who's paying that $100 billion? You guys. So not even the Green Bay Packers, which is supposedly a public uh, company, public sports team, the whole kind of concept that we're after here. None of that money flows to you. So read your terms and conditions. Uh, You have a piece of wallpaper there. Uh, Baseball practices started up again at the Jackie Robinson Field here at the Rose Bowl. Um, That's a good sign. That's the first time I've seen that in at least, of course, a year, uh, maybe a little longer than a year. Uh, Regarding the SEC case, the judge in this case, I believe the last action on it was in the summer of last year, said that the resources are strained in the D.C. Circuit um, and that we are not going to get government-appointed counsel, but it was specifically cited. Two things that I saw, it's just a minute entry, which is a couple of lines. It's, it's posted on the uh, ASM notice board if you want to see it. Um, a couple of things stuck, stuck out to me. One is the specific indication that the resources are strained. That is because of the attack in January. The court system is completely overwhelmed, including public uh, defenders and so forth. So that was put in there by the judge. I see that as an important thing. And also that the SEC alleges that the security sale took place. That is specifically worded in the the judge's minute order. So we are going to be challenging this, uh, saying that basically we need this help because it's been denied to us through other channels. In spite of being promised that help, it didn't come. And it's not about this. Remember that In court cases, judges do not really make decisions on the specific case. They're looking at the knock-on effects, and that's how they structure their decision-making. So our claim is going to be that this is hazardous to the SEC's entire code of law and the nonprofit space both. So this is important, and it needs to be dealt with correctly in order to not adversely affect the body of law. And for that reason, we, we, we need to wait until we can be given the help that we need, either through government-appointed counsel, because this is going to affect the public policy on this, or until we can arrange for assistance on our side. That is going to be our claim. We're going to be filing that motion in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, basically, that is the only thing that has happened on this case, is saying that at this time, the resources are strained and that we will not be given government counsel. We're going to challenge that and say, okay, fine, we'll wait. Give us time to try to do it on our own or give us some help or we can wait until the courts are less clogged in D.C. so that you can give us public resources. That's going to take quite a long time, I would gather, years because of the the uh, the condition of the dockets there. It's literally more overwhelmed than it's ever been in the D.C. Circuit. So um, this is important public policy. It needs to be done right. So either wait and give us help or give us time to find it ourselves. We are not doing what uh, was claimed. And let me be absolutely clear on this again, because there are public lies out there being perpetrated. This has absolutely nothing to do with sports shares. Nothing. Nothing to do with bonus margin. Nothing to do with sports shares. It is only regarded to, regarding the common and preferred stock grants that were part of a basket, part of a basket, this is very critical for some program members, that it, the company stock itself, that's all. Okay, so we have not done anything like that in years. We cut that off even before any of this came down in the lawsuit. So The claim is, look, we're not doing that. We're not going to do that. We said we're not going to do that. We have not been doing that, even though there's no injunction against us to do it. There's no injunction right now. I could go right back to doing it again, but I told them that we would not, and I'd stopped doing that even before the lawsuit was filed. So this case can wait until it is properly addressed through legal counsel because it is going to affect public policy in a very substantial way, both for the Securities and Exchange Commission's body of law and the entire nonprofit body of law. 
So that's where we're at on that. And the fact also, it, it doesn't seem to be getting across that we do not have any more money on hand. In fact, I spent more than $50,000 out of pocket that was discharged in my bankruptcy directly towards business expenses. So it's not only all the money collected, but it's all the money collected and more has gone into this. And this, so there's nothing left, okay? Everything, everything and more has been spent that was then was taken in to continue the mission. This is apps one and a half million dollars is absolutely peanuts, peanuts for the fintech space. And I'd like to say finally that the 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 housing complex that uh, Ace and I live in here uh, with our roommates and such, it is worth one point six million dollars. So it, please don't try to convince me that that's some giant sum of money in this day and age. Certainly not in California. So. Uh, First quarter, 2021 quarterly dividends are payable on March 31st um, in a few days here. That process uh, runs for a couple days afterward, you know, settling all of the accounts. So expect to see that. And finally, um, you know, I could care less if you make fun of me. You want to make cartoons and waste your time, uh, you know, doing all that stuff and trying to create personal insults and all that. I've seen that stuff my whole life. Have a good time. Waste your time. Um, it's kind of goofy and ridiculous. The only thing I care about is the mission, uh, and and the reason I get aggravated about these things is because they're actually uh, injurious to the mission. And, you know, if you're actually vested in this project and you're doing that sort of foolishness, all you're doing is hurting yourself. And if that doesn't matter, um, you know, there are 950, roughly 950 other people that you're damaging. So I do know who your names are, principal parties. So, uh, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's kind of amazing that you don't seem to understand that calling me out by name, I can turn around and do the same thing. Um, you know, I can pull the trigger on holding you accountable anytime I want. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, waste your time on this nonsense. And, you know, a day of reckoning will come. It comes for everyone. So if you uh, uh, have anyone you know that maybe doesn't know what's been going on with ASM for a while, please forward this uh, podcast link um, it, to get them caught up. As always, the relevant information for this particular episode and the current links and so forth, um, you know, all the stuff that is current will appear in the show notes. Um, review it if you're so inclined and subscribe if you want to be notified. Thank you and stay safe with your friends and your family. Bye now.